So in order to get started with my spot illustration for this assignment, maybe inspired by someone, some art I found on, on Behance, maybe from Google image searches, you know, all of these are spot illustrations, these sticker designs. This guy really likes VW vans. But what I did is I found that I wanted to do an animal head with suffer no fools. I found this kind of reference imagery. So I made what's called a style sheet of it, things to inspire my sketch. And then based on that, I did this drawing in pencil and none of it's showing up on the screen. I have to unfreeze the projector. Right. So this was my style sheet. Based on this, it kind of gave me a sense of a, a cool shape that could be a spot illustration of just the fox's head. I liked the eye in the middle of the forehead here. Thought that that said intelligence. And then I decided to maybe hint at a light bulb as well. And I only drew half of it so that then I could take it in to Photoshop or Photo P. and I could do this to it, right? So I'm gonna show you that process. And this is what you can do with your, your sketch, how you can actually refine your sketch in the computer before we do digital linking. So I'm gonna take this Photoshop PSD document, I'm gonna open up PhotoP. Let me close all this stuff. Open up Photo P. Feels like it's been a while. And I'm just going to drop my PSD file into there from assignment five. I'm doing a tiger for the morning class with Adobe products. And for this class, I'm going to do the fox and I'm going to do it with freeware. So looking at just the fox, It starts out with my sketch, but it doesn't need to stop there. So I'm gonna show you all the changes I made. The fox was kind of tricky because it kept looking more and more like a wolf or a cat. So I, keep, I kept tinkering with it within Photoshop using some of the skills, like I added teeth, I erased and cleaned some things up. I also turned it into a maze, so I I added where you would enter the maze, where you would exit, and then like opened up some channels so that, that maze could actually be done. I had my son do it. But I, I still thought it looked too much like a, like a hairless cat and not enough like a fox. And so the beauty of digital is you can use things like distort and warp and I narrowed it, and I like the idea of it fitting into a triangle. Even though they're spot illustrations, it's good to have kind of elemental shapes. So I made all these changes, and then late, late last night, even before I updated this file, I worked on it a little bit more, and I sent myself the image that I can download. And this is the one that I will work with. So just because, you know, getting a nice sketch is not easy, but this is what I ended up liking. And what's the difference between this and what I had before? It's very subtle. Ah. It's that I flipped the eye. And it gave me the kind of flare on the side as well as at the top. And I felt that that made kind of the fuzzy side of the fox a little bit more clear. Now this does not need to be like a logo where it, it looks good and finished with just line art. This is made to work with color. And I know that the fox's color is gonna help it look a lot less like a, a wolf or something. 
as well, especially because I can color in the, the width of the nose. But this is just to say that you can use PhotoP to really, really refine your sketch. So I'm going to take this. I'll just do a screen grab of it. This is the sketch I want to use. <laughs> I'm going to move it in. My computer is being R2-D2. I'm going to grow it. And so however you can get your finished sketch, maybe you want to composite a shape into it. All of that, it's all fair game, as long as it's your own kind of original vision of something. And even if it's not, even if it's just a tracing of a character, if it's just for educational purposes, you will learn the skills you need. But it's a lot more fun if you can make it something original for your portfolio. All right, but it's always good to have inspiration. So with this one, I'm going to crop it down. And then before I can digitally ink it, I need to make sure it's my final resolution. Because this is a screen grab. So you can see all those pixels. You see how blurred they are. It's not great. And now I don't really need any of this. I can flatten all of this. I just wanted to show you all the, the work that goes into getting something I'm excited to spend the time digitally inking, right? So spending time getting a good sketch is time well spent. Okay, so now I'm going to save it as a PSD, and I'm going to save it with the right labeling with my name. Assignment 5, and this is going to be my line art, my digital inking. I'm going to save it to the desktop. There it is. I'm going to label that green. That's what I'm working with. Now I'm going to go to image, image size. Very similar to what we did when we brought our logos into PhotoP to size them for printing. And I'm going to make sure that this is a high enough resolution. So right now it's 48 inches by 47 inches by 72 pixels per inch. That's because my camera phone works that way. So if I uncheck resample and see what is that at 350 pixels per inch, that's 9 by 10 inches. And actually, that's about right. I'm just going to goose it a little bit. I'm going to check resample. And I'm going to force the smallest dimension to be 10 inches. So it's going to be 10 inches by something else, so at least 10 by 10 by 350 pixels per inch. If you do it 8 by 10 by 350, that's not going to be the end of the world. But this is going to be used for a larger poster, so higher resolution is a little bit better here. The higher resolution, the cleaner your line art will be. Now, why don't I go to 600 pixels per inch? Well, because if you have it too high, especially on a browser-based program, it's going to really slow it down. I have my tablet and stylus plugged in. Now I'm going to create, let's see, I've named it. It's all good in PhotoP. If I hit save, let me test it here. File save. I want it to save, there we go, to a location with the name. So I made that little mark. I saved it. That little mark showed up. I'm good. I'm going to get rid of that little mark. Now I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to, all of these are going to be familiar steps to you from the logo assignment, where we built our logo on top of our sketch. I'm going to onion skin it, but I'm not doing it in vector. I'm doing it in photo P. So I'm going to fill a new layer with white at 100%. Then I'm going to take the opacity of that white down to about 60%. So I have a nice onion skinned example. Then I'm going to lock that layer so I can't accidentally color on that. And then I'm going to create a new layer on top of that, and I'm going to label that black line art. So how do we do black line art? First of all, in our defaults, our foreground, background color defaults, I want to click on that so that 
Black is in the foreground, white is in the background. So if it's anything other than that, just click on those little squares in the corner and you'll get black, solid, 100% black. Then I'm going to use the brush tool. When you open the brush tool, you'll see all the, the tool options at the top. I'm going to go to the top one and I'm going to use, doesn't actually really matter, but I'm going to use a hard edged one. That's 100% hardness. And the size, I'm going to make large enough so I can see it as a circle. So maybe about that big. Because this is going to be my inking brush. The opacity is 100%. The hardness is 100%. The smooth rate, I'm going to set to about 35. And that's going to help it from being too jittery. And then I'm going to zoom in. I can use Command Plus to do that. And I'm going to get started. It can be hard to do certain angles inking. So what I can also use is at the very bottom of your tools, right above the magnifying glass, is the hand tool. And the shortcut for this is R. It's a handy shortcut, just R on your keyboard. But that's to rotate. And this is just temporary so that when you're inking, anytime you're inking, you can just hit R. And that hand tool, and you can change the angle of it and then go back to your brush. So now when I start to ink, I start inking and where's my pressure sensitivity of my tablet? Because that's way too thick. It's always going to be maximum size. That's because I also have to set this to be pressure sensitive. So a tapering line. Now, with that same brush, I can find my line. And it takes a little while to set it up so you're comfortable with it. I recommend not going too thin with your lines. And not being too perfectionist with it. Because remember, it's pixels. So we can always correct it. We can always undo. And always erase or paint with white on top. And then we just stop at some point. Like for instance, I might just take this chunk with my lasso because I started really tentatively and then go back over that. You can change the angle. If you want your line to be really exact, then you don't need to use the pressure sensitivity. You can lock it to be a certain size. And this is what's called an animator's line. You're trying to get it really clean. So it, I want a graphic. I want it to be nice and bold. And it's OK if it doesn't match my sketch exactly. In fact, in some ways, it's better not to have a super, super refined sketch. So you're really making your final decisions with the inking. But I might make my brush a little bit smaller. especially as I'm doing these. Now I'm going to hit Command S a lot. Make sure that it's saving. You can see the line art there. Because especially using the brush with smoothing can take up a lot of processing. You can see how it will start to lag on you a little bit your browser base, so it's good to save a lot while you're doing this.